Amen. Well, let's jump into the word. Genesis chapter 1. And uh, tell the person next to you, you are word. Genesis chapter 1, beginning in verse 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was formless and void, and darkness was over the surface of the deep. So we know that in the beginning, God created the earth, and we know that something happened right between verse 1 and verse 2. We've talked about that. Uh, oftentimes people call it the dinosaur age. Some people call it the fall of Satan. But what God created was not full of darkness and void. He created something wonderful. But something cataclysmic happened. And, and I happen to believe that that was when Satan was cast out of heaven. And there was chaos and confusion that was taking place. And nothing fixed it until God started speaking. And, and we see that the Holy Spirit was present. But nothing had order until God started speaking. And this is important to remember that oftentimes when we get to a place in our life where we see things that are not in order or things that are out of order we can speak to that thing and bring bring alignment to that now you can be full of the holy spirit but if you don't have any word you won't have any order in your life amen and a lot of people have power but don't have any sense you ever know somebody they got a lot of power but they, they don't have much sense come on so we have the spirit of god there the power of god was present but nothing came into order until god started speaking now when you've got the holy spirit and you've got a word watch out because you can recreate anything now, i'm setting you up for next week i'm setting you up tonight because when 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 the power of the holy spirit falls next wednesday and and understand that the power of the holy spirit can fall any moment it can fall in your home it can fall in a church service it can fall in the grocery store when you're standing in line reading the national Enquirer. it can fall any moment but we're just believing for an extra outpouring of the spirit of god and fire to move and fall in this place next sunday amen so genesis chapter 2 verse 1 thus the heavens and the earth were completed and all their hosts by the seventh day, God completed his work, which he had done. And he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had done. All God had to do was say a couple of words because God didn't work with his hands. What did he work with? He worked with his words. In other words, on the seventh day, God stopped speaking. Come on. He ceased and ended the work that he had done and rested on the seventh day from all his work. Verse 3. Then God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because in it he rested from all his work which God had created and made. For some of you tonight, God is launching your next season. For some of you, this is a transitional moment in your journey right now. You've been at midnight. You've been at that, 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 that tipping point. You've been at that, that place where the fulcrum's about to tip and go in another direction. But midnight, the good thing about midnight is it's the end of one season and it's the beginning of another midnight's the end of an old day and the beginning of a new and if you've been in a midnight place in your life god is going to bring the passing of an old thing but open the door on a new thing come on amen because midnight is transitional something old is dying something old is passing away something new is beginning to be created and i've got to praise and not complain and praise him at midnight you showed up tonight not out of religious obligation but because you are ready for god to launch you into the midst of something great something mighty something powerful you're ready to get capped off you're ready to get fueled off you're ready to get your tank filled so that when you wake up tomorrow and you stare what God has destined you in, in, into this season of your life. You stare that thing into face and you say, I'm ready. I'm ready to move. I'm ready to do it. I'm ready to be launched into what you've called me into. Come on. It wasn't because you didn't have anything else to do. You know, we could be sitting home watching some reality show on television tonight. But here we are, praising God, worshiping, being filled up with the word. You're watching online tonight. God's got something for you. God's got some great destiny that you haven't even recognized yet. Something you don't even know. Something you haven't even touched yet. God's about to unlock it and release it into your life because you're in a transitional moment right now. Come on. We've talked about something happening between Genesis 1, 1 and Genesis 1, 2. After God created the earth... And it was cataclysmic. Nobody knows what it was, and there's a lot of theories, but something happened because God didn't create void, void and darkness. That came. 
that happened. And then God went to work for six days to renovate that which was messed up. And I don't know how long it, it took you to, you, and, you to mess up, but it doesn't take long, God long to renovate it. Come on. You know, there, there's some things that have, that have happened in my life, some things that I look back on and say, why did I do that? Why did, why did I decide to do this? And I wish I would have done something different. But when I look back on it, I see that God put his hands on it, and God started shaping it, and God started forming it after his purpose. How many of you know that God can use something that you looked at as a mistake, and he can turn it into something gold? He can turn it into something powerful. Come on. So he started off creating. And the word create means, as I've told you before, to take out of nothing. Now, that's interesting because how do you make something out of nothing? When you, when you see your children grow up and they, they take clay and they take Play-Doh and they take it out of the little tub that it comes in and they, they, they form it and they make it into snowmen and they make it into little, little figures and, and, and stars and all kinds of shapes. And it came out of a blob of substance but you made it into something that was recognizable god created something out of nothing the word create means to take out of nothing the word made means to take what exists and turn it into another form in other words when god started he created the earth out of nothing but his spoken word but then something happened and he had to renovate and change into another structure the thing which he formerly created. So God moved from creating to making. How many of you know there's a difference when you were created and when you were made? And you were made by your parents when they came together. God formed you a flesh suit to live in. But that's not when you were created. The Bible says you were created in Christ Jesus before the foundations of the earth were ever laid. Now, I don't know when that was, but that was a long time ago. Because whenever God said, let there be light, he already created you in his son, Jesus. So God knew you before you ever got here. And you existed in God in some form before you were ever made in the earth. Because you were created out of God. And then God... God use your parents to put together a suit that you could come and live in while you're here in the earth. That's why your body is not you. Your body is a temple. I told you on Sunday, he inhabits the praises of his people. If you don't give him praise, he's got nothing to come and live inside of. He lives inside of praise. The word temple means carrier. So that's why you can't leave it up to a pastor. You can't leave it up to a prophet or an evangelist or, 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 or a teacher or an apostle to carry the word. You are a carrier of the word. You are a, Tell the person next to you, you're a carrier. That's why your body is not you. Your body's a temple. Your body's a carrier, a carrier of the move of God. So if God created you and you came out of God, you are first then a spirit. Ephesians 1 4, it says that when God created you in Christ Jesus, the words eklegomai, say eklegomai. Lego is the verb form of logos. Logos is the word for word. In the beginning was what? The word and the word was what? God. Get this. The word of God and God are inseparable. You can't separate them. And nothing was created without him. So we know that the Greek word for, uh, for, for word is logos. Ek means out of. I've told you that before. Ek means out of. You are out of word. Everything that God created was out of word. You came out of word. When you are going through situations and moments in your life, and I've had to walk into this reality and this understanding. When you are going through things in your life and you say, God, I'm just waiting on a word from you. He's already given you the word. It's already inside of you. Are you there? The Bible says you were created in Christ Jesus before the foundations of the word. In other words, God created you out of word. He, he, he just gave you the good news. You didn't come out of your parents' names. You came out of word. Because God says that, he, and, and, and this is the great thing about the word. He watches over his word to what? 
to perform it. If you are made out of word and God watches over his word to perform it, your life is being overseen very closely and you're never far from God's eye and far from his reach. And the Bible says that God will not let his word return void unto him. So I came to tell you that that situation tonight that you are in, God's not going to let it last because God will not let your life end with you being broken. He's not going to let you go into a new season without mending the one you're just coming out of. God's not going to let your life end with you being fragmented. He won't let you end depressed. He's not going to let you end in pieces. So God watches over you to make sure you perform like you're supposed to and the destiny that he's called you to will come to pass because you are word and you cannot return to him void. Come on. Everything you've been put here to do, you're going to do. Everything you've been put here to be, you will be. Say, nothing's going to stop the word. So on the sixth day, God finished. On the seventh, he rested. Even God rested. Some of us, you know, if you're like me, my wife has to remind me, you need to take a break. Because I will go and go and go and go. It's like that old Energizer bunny that's pounding that bass drum that he's carrying. I just go and go and go. Sometimes my wife will be like, you need to stop. And I'm like, but if I stop, I'll forget what I'm doing. The older I get, the worse that gets. Come on. But God rested. So the first time God had an intention of creating Adam in his image, after six days he finished his work, and on the seventh he rested. Well, Adam gave up his authority. We've been talking about this. He sinned. He lost the glory. All of sin and fall short of the glory of God. So Jesus comes, and on the sixth day, Good Friday, come on, that's a good day, come on, He cried, it is finished. Now watch this metaphor. I'm going to talk about some type and shadows in a moment. Jesus comes on the sixth day. He says, it's finished. Jesus said, he laid in a tomb, and on the seventh day, he rested until the Sabbath. I'm about to take my shoe off and throw it at somebody in just a minute. All right. On the sixth day, he finished. This This is good. This is powerful. The first time Adam messed it up, Jesus came back. And the sixth day, he cried, it is finished the second time. The seventh day, God rested the first time, and the seventh day, Jesus rested the second time. On the first day, Jesus got up. When he got up, that signified death to the old and life to the new. Come on. Now, we've got God, and God created man in whose image? His image. Whenever God decides to create something, he has to decide what its source will be. Now, we've been talking about creating an atmosphere. We've been talking about you being the one to bring about the move of God. We've been talking about he inhabits the praises of his people. You are a carrier of word. You are a a releaser of the praise of God into the earth. God says, I want plant life. So he connected it plant life to the earth. The Bible says he spoke to the earth and he told the earth to bring forth all the fruit. So when God wants something, he doesn't speak to the thing he wants. He speaks to the thing who holds it. So if you need a word from God, he's given you the word. He's given you the revelation. He's just waiting for you to take the word and walk into the right season to where he can plant that word and you can see the harvest in your life that you've been praying for. Come on, somebody. So God is waiting for the word that's in you to walk into the right environment. So he says, let us make man. He said, I'm not going to connect man to the ground, the water, or the sky. I'm going to make man out of me, out of himself. He said, let us make man in our image. Therefore, God is the environment that sustains you. And it amazes me how oftentimes when believers can go through moments in their life that that test their faith, we remove ourselves from the presence of God and from the community of believers. Because I can't get around somebody because I don't want them to know what I'm going through. I don't want them to see what's going on in my life. So I take myself out of church. I take myself out of my, my spiritual accountability. And I remove myself. Let me tell you. If, if, if. If I remove you from God, that's the moment you start dying. I don't care that your body it may, may, be, may be alive because your body didn't come from, 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 from God. Your body came from the dirt. Hear me. There's a lot of people whose dirty side is living, but the real side of them is dead. Because physically you're walking in the earth, but spiritually you're disconnected from your source. If you want to charge your phone, you've got to plug it in. When I've got to charge my iPad, I've got to plug it in. Some of you drive those weird cars and you've got to plug it in. 
to get to where you're going. Because the real you, the spirit you, that lives on the inside of your body did not come from the ground. It came straight from God. So you've got to allow your spirit to be connected with the source from which you were created from. Come on. And as long as I stay connected to God, I have absolutely everything I need to sustain me. So when I'm walking through the fire, I know I'm going to come out the other side like gold. I'm going to come out refined. I'm going to come out better than I was before I went in the moment I'm pulled away from God and I've been removed from my environment is the moment I start dying every day you get up you've got to say he's the glory and the lifter of my head he's the bright and morning star I don't know what I've got to face today but I know I'm gonna face it knowing that God's got me he's gonna sustain me and your praise will build God a house right where you are come on and when you have God where you are, you've got everything you need to live an abundant life. Now, Jesus came and, and relived again what had already taken place, that Adam messed up. That's why Jesus is called the second or the last Adam. So watch this now. We call getting saved regenerated. The, the root word of regenerated is gene. Re means again. Gene means to make. You get that? Remake. Jesus came to make again a certain gene pool. Getting saved is not an event that helps you escape, escape hell. Getting saved is God recreating a gene pool in you that used to exist in man. So genes have to do with DNA. DNA is determined by the blood. So God sent his son and he was going to have to spill blood because in that blood lied a certain gene pool that nobody else had in the earth. Come on. So God sent his son to recreate a kind. Come on. You got, this, this. That's why he says in Ephesians 2.10 that we are created in Christ to do good works. We have to understand something that when you have been regenerated, it's not a condition which spares you from hell and makes you have to go to church on Sunday and be kind to people. That's where this church is different than a lot of others. I'm not trying to get you into the building and keep you out of hell. I'm trying to let you understand that you are a gene pool that's been put here to change the earth. You are no longer just human. You are now human body filled with the spirit of God filled with power filled with anointing filled with a calling filled with a destiny and when you leave this place and you get into the earth you have got to plug into your source so that he can spread what he's put in you all over the earth come on somebody you're no longer just a product of your parents' failures or successes. When you came to the altar and accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior, and you're washed in the blood of Jesus, then the blood of Jesus is then applied to your life, and you've been regenerated, and now you are of a royal bloodline, and a new DNA has been placed on the inside of you. And what once was impossible is now possible, because in Him, all things are possible. Somebody shout hallelujah. In the beginning, he didn't create. He didn't create uh, just, just, just man. He didn't create male. He created man in his image. Man is a kind. The Bible says he created them male and female. So God made his kind and dropped his kind into two genders. But before God made male or female, he made something like himself, and then he dropped it in male and female. And when male and female get together, that is the storybook of our relationship with Christ. It shows how God designed it. I should be able to, to, to show you what God is like and never have to open my mouth because you can look at my life and you can say, wow, they made it through that. They made it through that fire. They made it through that trial. They made it through that tribulation. I just had my wife and I just last night had a conversation with our daughter for the first time in a month because God is about to restore what the enemy is trying to take away he's not gonna get it he's not gonna get in there and destroy what God meant for his purpose come on and that's why you've got to stay on your knees and pray that's why you can't give up when the times get rough that's why you've got to continue to cry out to God and and and, and seek the Lord of the harvest you know oftentimes when we go through these things we think with these tough times and these moments in our life where we feel like God's failed us and God's left us and God's pressed us beyond our ability to, 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 to comprehend. 
Oftentimes we feel like the seed that is put in us is, is spoiled. The seed within us is tainted. Nobody's going to want God what I have. Nobody God is going gonna, is gonna to want what, what you put inside of me because it's tainted. Because I've gone through this and I've gone through that. Let me tell you something. Sometimes that's the thing that makes the greatest seed for the harvest that he's about to prepare you to walk into. You ain't ever gone through anything. How do I know you're going to be able to walk with me and run with me to make it through what I'm going through? Come on. The Old Testament, the New Testament is what your Bible's made up of. The word testament means covenant. An old covenant, a new covenant, you live in the new. You don't live in the old, but the old one is still the word of God because it points to the new. Amen? So the Bible says that the Old Testament was a type and shadow of what's to come, meaning I can read the Old Testament and tell that Jesus is coming. So I can see in the Bible that something is happening, and there's a thread running through here. And here comes Matthew. Here comes Luke. Here comes, here comes John. Here comes Mark. Here comes Jesus. And he's created a new covenant, a covenant of his grace and his blood. A shadow. Now, I see my shadow right now because there's a light behind me that is casting my shadow. I can't see my shoes. I can't see the jacket or the t-shirt. I can't see my face. But I see a silhouette. I can see the figure that this shadow is casting on this stage. The Old Testament doesn't give me all the details about Jesus, but I can read it and get a structural understanding of what's going to happen. Because the light can hit your hand and cast a shadow, but you can't tell whether or not I have a scar on my hand or not based on the shadow. But you can look at the shadow and tell I have five fingers. Are you with me? When you read the Old Testament, you don't get all the details, but you get just enough. When God calls you to, in, to fulfill and walk in, in an understanding of destiny, and, and he places a mantle for your purpose, he oftentimes just gives you the shadow. He won't give you the detail. But do you have enough faith to be able to say, I see the shadow, I know the direction, and I'm willing to walk in it. And I'm just going to trust God that you're going to work all things together for my good because I've been called according to your purpose. I've been called according to your will, and I'm in faith walking this thing out. Now, when Adam was put to sleep and Eve was made, that was a type and shadow of Jesus. Now watch this. The Bible says that God looked all through the garden, and there was no suitable helper for Adam. I bet Adam was, 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 was trying to figure out what, what, what was happening, and when a helper came along, he was probably pretty thrilled. So God put Adam to sleep. Then God reached into his side. The Bible says when Jesus came, he came to his own and his own received him not. Now watch this. There was no suitable helper. There was no suitable helper for Adam. When Jesus came, he came to his own and his own received him not. So God told Jesus to go to sleep. He pierced his side and said, since there's no suitable wife for you, <laughs> I'm going to put you to sleep. And out of your side, I'm going to pull you a bride. So Adam went to sleep. God reached inside of him and pulled his wife out of his side. When the Roman soldier looked at Jesus on the cross and pierced his side with a spear and blood and water flowed, he had no idea that the bride of Christ was going to come out of his rib. For when the blood and water flowed, that was the sound of being born again. And you and I flowed out of the side of Jesus. And Jesus went to sleep. And when he stood up, there we were. His bride, you and I, his church. Because the blood that flowed out of his side was the blood that washed away my sin and purchased my salvation. And now we stand together as one body, one church, one bride as the bride of Christ. And that's what time Type and shadow is all about. Watch. Moses, the Bible says he was a prophet likened unto God. Moses was a type of Christ, and he did things that type typified a, a, a Christ, a type of Christ. The Bible talks about Jesus being a rock that would be smitten. Well, what did Moses do? The people had no water to drink. Jesus said, I am the living water. So he went and struck the rock, and the, wa and, the, and, and the water flowed, and the people lived by the water that flowed from the rock. And God told him a second time that when they needed water, he said, God, and speak to the rock, and Moses didn't, and in his frustration, he hit the rock again. You remember? And the shadow lied on the reality because Moses was supposed to be a type and shadow of what Jesus would be. And Jesus would not be struck twice. 
Jesus would only be struck once. Jesus was only struck one time, and that would purchase all the salvation for all of humanity and all generations to come. And Moses hit the rock twice, but Jesus would only be struck once. Why? Because after Jesus is hit once, then we've been given the authority and power to speak. And then when after we speak, things move. Come on, somebody. And Moses was supposed to be a shadow of let the rock be struck once. And after he struck it, he would have had the authority to now speak to the thing and it bring about what God promised. It was a type and shadow of what was to come. Here's another one. David was a type of Christ. Christ came out of David's bloodline. Did you know that? When they come up on the Philistines, after David had heard all the attacking that Goliath had spoken, Goliath representing a type of, of Satan, an enemy, David a type of Christ, he looked down in the brook. You know the story. He picked up five stones. Well, Jesus, who took the head off of Satan, picked up five stones. Apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. And it's meant to have no outside influences. And, and he took the rock and he flung the rock at Goliath. God's apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers are to be the weapons that would march in front of the army and make the first hit against the head of the enemy. I'm talking about praying over your households, over our cities, over our generations. And the Bible says that after the rock hit his head, all the people of Israel began to merge and come together and go to overthrow the Philistines. I, I should be a leader that I could go in front of you and say, he's down, the enemy's down, he's down, it's time to go, it's time to come together, it's time to assimilate because God's about to move in the earth. God's about to move in this region i'm telling you today right now that the enemy is mad at what god is doing in vermont he's mad at what god's doing in the, in new england and i'm telling you and i've told you before but we are about to see one of the greatest moves of god in this region that we've ever seen before you look back in the history books and you see what jonathan edwards did you see what smith wigglesworth did you see what one of the some of the great uh, uh, carriers of the faith have done that's nothing compared to what god is going to do and when you look a hundred years down the line they're going to look back in what God is doing in 2020 2030 2040 2050 and they're going to say my God that was some of the greatest moves of God that ever took place it is coming it's about to happen and I'm telling you if we will assimilate and prepare ourselves and come together as the body of Christ we will see the hand of God move you think you've seen miracles yet not what's about to happen you haven't seen it yet you think you've seen signs and wonders before not yet because what about what's about to happen is beyond our understanding it's beyond comparison it's beyond anything that's ever been recorded in the history books i came to tell you you and i have been fighting the enemy and we've just thrown the first rock we've just prepared ourselves for battle but you know what because the battle belongs to the lord all we've got to do is begin to praise him and when he inhabits our praise he prepares us with all authority all power to go head first into what what God has destined us to do some of you he's got your stuff you need to go back into the enemy's camp and go get your stuff back because Satan is rocking and reeling but he is not going to take you out somebody shout hallelujah come on Genesis uh, I'm sorry Ephesians chapter 3 Ephesians chapter 3 in verse 9 can I get a little bit more up here Please, Ephesians chapter 3, verse 9. And to bring to light what is the administration of the mystery for ages has been hidden in God who created all things. So God has had a plan and it's been hidden and the Holy Spirit wants everybody to see what God's plan is. Verse 10. So that the manifold wisdom of God might now be made known through the who? The church to the rulers and the authorities in heavenly places. The intent was not for a church that would holler for God to come fix us. The intent was for not for you to, to, to get saved so we can come to church and, 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 and get upset about what we're not fixing. The intent was for God to recreate a God gene pool in the earth that would have his seed and can grow up into him and, 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 and he be in them. The intent of God is that the principalities and powers that have been loosed in the earth through the sin of Adam would be overthrown by the church of Christ. Are you there? 
I came to tell you that we're not a bunch of weak, impotent, powerless people with a life that's spiraling out of control that we can't do anything with. You have a Jesus that says all authority. Somebody say all authority. He said, all authority I give unto you. You shall tread on serpents and scorpions. Those are demons and, 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 and demonic principalities and powers. And he said, nothing shall by any means harm you. I know you want Jesus to do it, but the Holy Spirit's on the inside of you. And he's given you the power, you the authority. You know why? Because you've got a word. Because you were born out of word. You've got a word. You've got a praise. You've got a worship. You've got a God. You've got an environment. And God isn't going to do what he he wants you to do he gave you the flesh shoot he gave me the flesh shoot and he said go and make disciples he says go and be fruitful and multiply he said go and take dominion he said go and occupy i just wonder if there's somebody in this place tonight who is ready to go and be take what god has destined them to take to go and be what he's called you to be come on he wants you to cast out things that of the enemy. He says, I want you to overthrow the disease. I want you to take your children back. I want you to recapture a generation. Somebody say, he's waiting on me. Come on. What God did is he came in and he did it again. He recreated the gene pool after himself. And he did it because his intention was to have a people in the earth that had authority over the enemy. Not whining to God. Not complaining to God. To take authority over the enemy. That's why Jesus came and left. He didn't come and stay. The reason he came and left is because you tell the person next to you, you, you are now him in the earth. He left you here. Notice that when Jesus went to heaven, the Holy Spirit didn't go anywhere. Come on. Because the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead so he could go back and live with his father the Bible says guess what he lives where in you you know why we don't do what Jesus does because we don't know we have what Jesus has and nobody's telling anybody you know why churches are so powerless because pastors don't want to lose their jobs anymore so if we keep you powerless that keeps us powerful I want you to be powerful so that you can go out and do what God's called you to do. Come on. So if I don't tell you the information God wants you to have, if we're not searching out the word of God for ourselves, I always ensure your dependency on me. But I don't want you to have to be dependent on me. I want you to be dependent on the word of God because you were born out of that thing. Come on. I tell you these things to remind you of the power that Jesus gave to you. Everything God's got, he left on the inside of you. Why am I going to stand here and not tell you who you are? I didn't come here tonight to make you weak. I came here to remind you how powerful and how strong you are. I want to see your knives sharpened. I want to see your minds full of what Jesus has reminded you. You've got to set your mind on. Get your weapon ready to go back home and get the devil out of it. Come on. Somebody shout hallelujah. John 1, 12. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God. Listen, when you are in the family, you don't beg to be in the family. But, they're, but your kids, my kids, they're in your family. So they know what they have access to. You're in the family, but you've got to know what you have access to. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, even to those who believe in his name, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. The word of means out of. This stuff tears religious people all to pieces. Too much responsibility born of God. If, you are, if, if, if you're a dog, guess what? You're born out of a dog. If you are a sheep, you are born from a sheep. If you are out of God, you're of God. What happened when you got saved? You got regenerated. He gave you a new gene pool. James 1.18 says, In the exercise of his will, he brought us forth by the word of truth so that we would be a kind of first fruits among his creatures he came and regained you you were born of God whatever you're of you are and he brought you forth to be his kind and to be a first fruit of the kind of creature that he is are you with me so the Bible says let us make man in our image he used the word Elohim somebody say Elohim 
In Psalm 8, when he says he made man a little lower than Elohim, the word Elohim is the name of God, and it has to do with creator. So when God recreated you, he created you to be a creator. Are you there? And he said, here is what I'm going to do with this creative element. I'm going to lay it in your mouth. What God did the first time, he did with Jesus in the same sequence. When he did, he regened you. You were born of God, born of the will of God, and born to be his kind. You were named after his creative aspects. And he regened you to be able to operate as he operates. Why this word? Why are we talking about word? Why do we talk about, in the beginning was the word. The word was God. Are you, are you with me? So, if God was word, and we're born out of God, you know, too many people in God's church are living under a canopy of words. That's why Jesus said that every idle word that comes out of your mouth will be judged. Idle words produce idle lives. Some of you feel like your life is stuck. What are you saying to your life? What are you speaking to the, to the, to the season you're in? And you, we oftentimes create the roof with our words, and we live under that. And they can't figure out why we can't get out from underneath it. But we fail to realize that every time we open our mouth, we're creating. God created us to create. We have the power in our tongue to create an existence and a reality that we may or may not want to live in. But you are, you are a creator after his gene pool made in his image to operate like he operates. Talk is not just talk. When you say something, you are either bringing death or life because death and life is where are you are you with me not understanding it's not just idle talk words build a world and there are people who are living under the duress of many people speaking against you let me tell you I cast down every power every every, every principality and demonic power because the final authority over my life is not what somebody else says come on about you or about me it's what God says about me and there are people in here who cannot get out from under the canopy of their words or somebody else's word your marriage might be in a mess but have you ever listened to yourself talk about your marriage I hear people over the years, I've heard people talk about their marriage, talk about their husband, talk about their wife. And I, we, we get in the car and we're like, well, no wonder. Listen what they say about each other. Why are they talking about like that to, to, to so-and-so? Why are they even telling me? I don't want to know that. I will pray for you, but I didn't need to know that. You no longer want to be married, but have you ever heard what you say about your spouse? You have that one child you can't manage, but have you ever gone back and replayed what you've said to that child in times of frustration? You are that child's authority. The Bible says that unless you pull them down, whatever you've spoken over them stands. In other words, God will hold you accountable for what you've said over the things that you are in authority over. See, well, we want to blame everything on the enemy, but that's just not the case. The enemy is, can oftentimes be right in your mouth, and it's a double-edged sword. Come on. You say, well, how did I get here in my life? Oftentimes, we speak ourselves there. You're going to wake up tomorrow morning. You may not want to go where you're going tomorrow morning to help bring resources into your life, but why are you cursing the place that God has given you provision to bring into your life? Don't curse that thing. You say, well, I'm so depressed. You can't understand why you get out of it. You may feel depressed, but you are not depressed. You ever listen to the words that come out of your mouth, you may begin to realize that. And then you, we tell everybody why our life is so bad. I dare you just to say one word from God when you begin to get into a moment of, of frustration. When, I, come on. You know what the word confession means? It means to say the same as. You're the glory and the lifter of my head. I don't know how I'm going to get through this, but you're the glory and the lifter of my head. You're the glory and the lifter of my head. I, you are to confess the word, so you are, to say, you are to say the same thing that God says. If you're born out of God, your consistency, your DNA, your spiritual makeup is that of heaven. So why would we say something that is in opposition of what God would say. 
The Bible says that the angels go to perform the word. Well, they're only going to go and perform that of God. So if we're speaking something that is not of God, angels can't go and carry that word. The reason that your words have power is because of who you are. You are the God kind, and you operate like God operates. Whatever words you speak, you are igniting that world and giving it permission. If you're cursing all the time, you're energizing the demonic world to have activity in your life. Well, I thought I was saved. You are saved, but your mouth might be a mess. James said that the tongue is a rudder. It's a very small instrument, but it steers a mighty ship. The fact is, is our tongue, our words are steering the ship of our life. And though it's a very small vessel, God God says no man can tame it and if anybody can he'd be a perfect man in other words if you could have a perfect tongue you would have a perfect life life imperfections begin with your tongue God took Ezekiel to the gate of the city and he said why is Israel in such a mess he said because its counselors keep speaking ne negativity over the people are you there and while Ezekiel was prophesying they died the power to destroy them was in his mouth. And the power to awaken Israel's army of dry bones was in his mouth. Do you know what God did? He grabbed Ezekiel. I can just see. He grabbed Ezekiel. I, I shook him. You talk to those dead bones. The power is not mine, Ezekiel. The power is in your mouth to talk to the dead bones. You are my mouthpiece in the earth and I need somebody to speak what I want. So come here, Ezekiel. And he whispered in his ear, tell these dry bones to live. Ezekiel said, okay. You ever had that moment where you're just about to say it and you're, you're fighting doubt. You're fighting, I don't believe that this is going to happen. I don't believe it's going to come to pass, God. But I hear, speak to these dry bones. He said, I command these dry bones to live again. I command these dry bones to live again. I command these dry bones to live again. And the Bible says that they came up out of the ground and they became a mighty army. Your life is worth speaking the word of God. You've got to get up and prepare yourself and engage what heaven wants to release to you. God is positioning you to be a mouthpiece for his glory. God is positioning your life. To become a mouthpiece for his glory. And some of us are living under the roof of our own words. Some of you have outright spoken sentences over your life. You've said things like never. You've said things like impossible. You've said things like it's never going to be. But I want to speak to you tonight and say to you that you can't speak that sentence over your life. Because every time you try to move forward, you hear those words speaking to you. They've got power. They've got the ability to create. They've got the ability to, to kill or to bring life. Someone may have told you, you will never, you can't, you'll never be this, you'll never be that, and you can't get beyond it. But you're of word. You're born of the word of God. You have the word in you to overcome what's been spoken over you by the enemy to pull you down and to destroy what God wants to do. Would you stand this, this evening? I love you and I want to see you prosper. Some of you, there's some generational curses, maybe that you've got to break over your life of, of negativity. And, and oftentimes, I think we, we get into the, the battle of, 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 of fighting what somebody has spoken because it's been spoken so many times. And we feel like we can't overcome it. We feel like we can't, we can't conquer it. But I want to tell you tonight, you can not only conquer it, but you can defeat it and create something new in the next season. Come on. Late in the midnight hour, God will turn it around. He's going to work it in your favor. Just lift your hands to heaven right where you're at. Father, I thank you that you love us enough to create us out of yourself, to create us out of word, to create us out of what never existed until you spoke the words. You loved us enough to die on Calvary. You loved us enough to stretch yourself on a cross and experience the worst death in human history. You loved us enough 
to get up out of that grave. You loved us enough to give us the same spirit that brought you out of that grave. God, I thank you that every person in this place is of word. Just think of that right now while you stand there. Just think of how powerful that is. You're born out of the very breath, out of the very mouth that created everything that we see, everything that exists. That's how special, that's how incredible, that's how set apart and extraordinary you are. You're royal and priestly. You're chosen. God's destined you. He's ordered your steps. He's created this moment in your life for right now. You say, well, pastor, there are times and moments where I feel like I just can't do this anymore. I, I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm failing God. I feel like I'm failing my family. I feel like I'm failing myself. I go through seasons where I'm excited. I go through seasons where I feel like I just can't do it another day. He's the God of the mountains. He's the God of the valleys. He's the God of your yesterday, and he's the God of your tomorrow. Greater things is he about to do in your life. For every person in this place today, in this room tonight, you know every unspoken prayer. You know every unspoken word. You know the deepest, darkest secrets that lie within each and every person in this place tonight. Heavenly Father, I pray right now that your will would be done, that your kingdom would come on the inside of each and every person in this place, that we would understand that as carriers of your glory, as instruments and vessels in the earth today, that we would reflect your glory everywhere we go and that every word that would come out of our mouth would decree and declare how magnificent and holy you are how incredible and awesome you are that there would be nothing that would destroy and hinder what you're doing in our lives so father tomorrow we thank you for what's about to come because we know that in the good and in the bad you're there we thank you father for a year from now what's about to come because we know you've already prepared the steps and you've already made the way father we thank you the generations that are coming behind us that right now god you are already preparing through our praise a generation that's about to be born a generation that's about to come and be filled with your spirit god let us not take these moments lightly but let us realize that every time we come together there's a shift in an atmosphere we create a shift on the earth together and we are the carriers of a move of your spirit and a move of god in the earth father i pray that you would release tongues of fire in this place on everybody that you would release healing upon everybody that you would release freedom upon everybody that you would release breakthrough upon everybody that you would release your spirit in a way that we've never seen upon everybody that there would be a mighty shaking in the earth that there would be a mighty move of god in the earth because your faithful body your faithful church your bride has come together and we are ignited with a passionate fire burning deep within our spirit longing for God to move through us in the earth so that we would see the greatest move of God that we've ever seen before so we speak it in faith we decree breakthrough we decree greatness we decree the greatest move of God on the earth through our life as instruments and vessels on the earth prepared for this moment god we thank you for what you've done we thank you god for what tomorrow holds and we thank you god that we can be used as instruments of heaven 
in the earth. Here we are, Father. Make us, mold us, shape us, form us after your heart to be carriers of your word and carriers of your will. And we give you all the honor. We give you all the praise. And we give you all of our worship. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen and amen. You are a word. You are an instrument. You are a carrier. And God is going to do something great in your life. Amen. Give God a shout of praise one time tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you need prayer, I want you to come up so we can pray with you. Love up on somebody before you leave. You do not want to miss next week. It's going to be powerful as we welcome Dr. Rodney Howard Brown. Lord bless you. We love you.